Today I want to give you something like a guide for your path into F1. For those who are new to my channel, I worked as an engineer for Audi, McLaren, Force India and Racing Point before and today I'm a self-employed motorsport consultant. So let me know if you need help with your project. So I want to give you three paths to become an engineer in F1. The first one is quite straightforward. You study engineering, you find a job offer of a team, you apply for it and you get the job. But if you think that there are only 10 Formula 1 teams with 600 employees on average and half of the staff are engineers, there are only 3000 positions and people from all around the world apply for them. So it's very competitive and very hard to get in. The next thing is that you might get sudden appointments. F1 is a quick business and sometimes you have messy HR departments, some F1 teams don't even have an HR department and you talk to engineers directly. So there's no social HR blah blah, you get straight to the point. Instead of getting an appointment in two weeks time, you might get one for the day after tomorrow, or tomorrow, or even later today. And then it's hard if you are not there in time because you are abroad. Also at this path you have to go through the standard application process with multiple stages, tests and assessment centers, depending on the team. And if you do apply for an F1 team in the UK, you should have a bulletproof one-page CV ready in UK style. I applied first with German style CVs and let me tell you, it does not work. To get through the first HR filters, you have to have the right format and the right salary expectations. And that's something no one really talks about, so I will give you some numbers. When I finished my bachelor in engineering in Germany and started to work at Audi, my base salary was 60,000 euro per year. But we have pretty high taxes in Germany, so that doesn't all land in your pocket. So after I worked two years as engineer in the technical development at Audi and spent £9,000 on my master course in the UK and being higher qualified now, I put in more than £60,000 as salary expectations in my applications. And I never got a reply. When talking to contacts in the industry later on, I was told that they expect £25,000 to £30,000 for a graduate position. And I had to apply for a graduate position because my previous experience wasn't relevant for them. So you don't go to F1 for the money and people work there because they are passionate about it. But on the other hand, your salary can increase quickly in F1 depending on your performance. An easier way is to know somebody inside F1. F1 is a pretty small circus and engineers tend to move around inside the circus. So the number of engineers stays roughly the same they just change team every now and then. And so it's very possible that colleagues in one team become colleagues again in another team because both change job. And that makes it even harder to get in, if you're coming from the outside. So if a position needs to be filled, people ask around with friends and colleagues if they know someone. And that someone might be currently working at another team. But if this person is willing to change the team and gets referred by a respected team member, this person will get the job and not the other one from outside. So if you have contacts to a team, you might know about an upcoming position before it's even advertised. And also you can influence what they are looking for. So if they are looking for a junior engineer and you're looking for a senior position, then they could make it a senior position if they really want you. So how can you get contacts and experience in motorsport if you don't have them? First of all, you should go to any kind of motorsport events around your place or wherever you can go. To save money for the ticket, you should go there early, like on a Tuesday or Wednesday when teams are assembling pit equipment and cars. Or you stay late after the event is done for the day, like on a Saturday evening when all spectators went home already. Or you work at the event as marshal or even just at the cashier. You will have some time to wander through the paddock and meet people and you are there for free or even get paid. And you should ask teams if you can help. Motorsport teams are always short of money and like free help. You might start with making coffee or sweeping the floor, but that's okay, you are in. You could then progress to washing the car and suddenly you are already working on the race car. Or you could ask them about the design of their car and start a technical talk with them. They will see you are interested and skilled and these people are passionate about technology so they are usually happy to chat. Have your business card and a small CV ready and give it to the relevant people. Let them know you would be happy to help them next weekend again. And you're always available. 
People will see that you're really up for it and they will recognize that. These are your first contacts in motorsport. And these people will have other contacts to other teams and categories. Also, in a later job application and interview, you can talk about your experience in a smaller team and people will love that. That gives you an advantage and might cover up a bad mark. I did this directly approaching people at the racetrack a lot and it helped me in my later steps. That way it takes a bit longer, but you get lots of experience along the way and also workshop staff can be promoted to engineering departments later on. An unusual way of getting contacts in F1 is to use your creativity to find out email addresses online and send your CV to key people. It's a long shot, but later it helped me to get an interview with Nicolas Tompazi, single-seater technical director at the FIA and back in the day head of aerodynamics at Manor. But shortly after the team went bankrupt, but that's another story. So when I was planning my way into F1, I saw these two ways. But at the time, I didn't know anyone in F1 and I also wasn't around and had no connection to the business. So there is a third way. You study motorsport in the UK. A motorsport master was only possible in the UK a couple of years ago, but now also other universities start programs. In the UK, the three big motorsport universities are Southampton for race car aerodynamics, Cranefield for advanced motorsport engineering and Oxford Brooks for motorsport engineering. When I applied, Southampton took only 7 students per year, Cranefield 20 and Oxford 40. I got offers by all three of them and in pre-Brexit time, these one-year courses cost £9,000, £9,000 and £4,500 for EU students and double the price for overseas students. Now these courses cost much more. But don't run away and scream just yet, let me tell you about the advantages of this way. So, the good thing with such a study is that you are now based in the UK. There is a so-called motorsport valley, similar like Silicon Valley, just for motorsport. And it's located north of London between Oxford and Cambridge. So Oxford and Cranefield are directly in this area. And that means that many motorsport teams, including 8 F1 teams plus suppliers, are nearby. These motorsport teams also know the master courses and so they send representatives to these courses to present job opportunities. The next thing is that universities have cooperations with F1 teams and might do projects together. And that might be a perfect opportunity for you to get in touch with a team. I chose Cranefield in the end because they have some other advantages. First of all, Cranefield is a former World War II airfield in the middle of nowhere, so you can fully concentrate on race cars and planes and nothing else. On campus is one of the two FIA certified crash centers for Formula One cars, which means that at least seven of the eight F1 teams in the UK will be customers here and they will visit the campus frequently. The next thing is that the motorsport course in Cranefield has a so-called steering committee. That is an industrial advisory board to make sure that students learn the right things in this course. Members include Adrian Reynard, David Lapworth, Pat Simmons, F1 representatives of Red Bull, Ferrari, Mercedes, McLaren and Alpine and many other key motorsport people. So what you learn in the course is relevant. And when these companies and teams see a student graduated from this course, they know that this student has the skill set they need. So that's an important advantage in the application process. The next thing is that if you're a student in this course and you're looking for a partner for your final thesis, you have top contacts inside the university. So you can suggest your thesis topic to a high-ranking representative of a team and they will get you in contact with the right people. That on the other hand can result in you working inside these companies for your thesis and already being paid while being a student. So, you have a good chance to already work inside a team during the end of your course and being inside means much better chances of staying inside after you finish the course. So a master course like the one in Cranefield can not just locate you in the middle of the motorsport valley, it can also put you in contact directly with the teams and experts can sharpen your focus on the right topics. And as a little side note, before I came to the UK I've never seen a real Formula 1 car. The Cranefield University has its own Formula 1 car in the workshop, so it's really like a big candy shop. If you cannot afford such an expensive study in the UK, but you still want to learn about the specific motorsport topics, 
or you even want to get the knowledge you can only have if you worked in the top categories of motorsport before, check out my online courses below. These courses will give you a detailed and clear presentation of how aerodynamics and design works in F1 and they will also prepare you for starting a role in Formula 1 aero departments. This will not just give you an advantage in tough F1 job interviews, this will also help you to settle in quicker once you start the job, because the probation time in F1 can be brutal and not everybody can make it. And these courses are a lot cheaper than the one year course in the UK, so check out the links in the description for more. Another important topic is that a study in the UK works differently to what I was used to before. Before in Germany my study was for free and academically on a very high level, but less hands-on. In the UK everything is a business case, also your study. The Cranefield course was expensive, but we only did projects which were relevant for the industry. Because of this close connection to the industry, lots of their graduates end up in Formula 1 teams. The university can use this as advertisement for their course and their high success rate. And that attracts more students. The popularity increases the course's price and the university can choose from the best students and this will send good candidates to the team. So it's a successful circle. And now let's talk about the F1 business itself which is important to understand if you want to join F1. They are bigger and smaller teams. Smaller teams have less resources, are usually less successful and hence get less sponsoring and prize money. So they spend as much on the car's development as they can and as little as they can on salaries. So don't expect high salaries in F1. Because of that, smaller teams tend to employ graduates because they are cheaper. And after one year they are still cheap and capable engineers as well. In smaller teams you have more responsibilities and learn a lot in a lot of areas. The normal cycle is then that these well-trained engineers go to the bigger teams after two to three years where they will have better pay but only be responsible for a smaller area. Once you are in the F1 circus, you have to understand that you build your own image, your own brand. People you meet in one team could be your colleagues in another team in the future, so you shouldn't burn all bridges when you leave a team. And if you perform poorly in one team, other teams will also know about it and probably don't want to take you because they know your story. If on the other hand you had a great idea and you were thinking out of the box, other teams will also know which engineer was responsible for that and they will probably approach you. It's also nothing unusual that if your friend or your boss at work gets such an offer, he or she can pull you with them to the other team, if they convince the other side that you would be a good addition to the team. So in the end it all comes down to your own actions. And being active and working towards your goal of being an F1 engineer doesn't start after the study, it starts much earlier, during school already. You have to use every opportunity to learn, no matter where you are in the world. A study in the UK is hard and expensive, but it puts you in the right locations and puts you in contact with the right people to fulfill your dream. So I hope this helps some of you and if you like this video please consider to become a B-Sport Club member for more videos like this.